Okay, welcome to lesson three on analyzing statistics graphical measures. I'm really not sure if the word analyzing should be with a Z or an S, and I really should double check that, but um, I'm really always like just uh, relying on uh, spell check. That's one of those funny words that I think maybe can go both ways. Um, so question to warm up with is, is really what are these graphs telling you? We've seen histograms before. Uh, it's important to note that this is this is graph of the exact same data. And so both on the left and the right is two graphs of the same data. So if you stare at it for a while, like, we can see what the graph's telling you. Now, there's a couple things that, that are going to happen in this graph that, that you can maybe suspect ahead of time. But if you're looking at the graph and, and what the data is, what the data is um, maybe you can figure out what the, what the thing on the left is doing. And we're going to talk about that in this lesson. So I know that a histogram and a box and whisker plot give me a picture of how a given data set is distributed. I can classify distribution type, identify outliers, and discuss the effect that both have on measures of central tendency and measures of spread. A histogram contains continuous data grouped in class intervals, which will display some data split, display how some data is spread over a specified range. The width of the, each bar is known as the bin width. Um, Google Docs calls it the bucket size. Um, different bin widths produce different results. We've seen that. Um, we've seen in uh, in analyze or um, organization of data for analysis that we can. Uh, come up with different conclusions based on different graphs. Um, we're actually going to see that again here. Bin width should be equal and display five to ten bins. So you can, you, you got to have all the intervals the same size, and uh, you want at least like five to ten bars on the histogram. When creating graphs in Fathom, it's important to adjust the bin alignment and bin width to improve the display. Um, I can show you. I think I've demonstrated that before. Importance of bin width. Um, so here you've got the exact same data, but totally different uh, interpretations. Histograms represent the same data. One shows much less structure of the data. One uh, one shows too much. It doesn't summarize the distribution very well. Okay. Um, and so this would be an ideal where you have that uh, six bins or, or seven bins, um, so seven bars, and that that's ideal. A couple types of distribution that we can see from a histogram: um, a bimodal distribution has like two uh, peaks in the data. It really, it, you can say call it also call it U-shaped. Um, it really shows that there could be different categories within the data set. Um, so uh, really, like you can look at body weight, and uh, you've got adults versus children. Um, so maybe if there's adults and children in this data, you can see the different the different types. Second one is called the uniform distribution, and, and this is really discrete data. I know, but just get, just to give you an example, I wanted to demonstrate one. Each outcome has similar frequency. The height of the, each bar is roughly equal. Um, example rolling a die. It's really hard to get a uniform distribution. It doesn't happen a lot, but um, but it, it can happen. Uh, type of distribution, like a, you can also have a normal distribution. Um, and so we've we've studied the normal distribution already. Um, it's also like a mound shape. Like that's another word for it because normal is really a specific type. But you can also say mound shape. Uh, central intervals of the greatest frequency, and again, although it's discrete, rolling two dice and adding the total would, would have a mound shape. And I just wanted to demonstrate what what a mound shape would look like, and so the the easiest way to do that is to do dice sum. A skewed distribution, so uh, it's asymmetrical, and the direction so so it tells you the skew type. So you can imagine this is an arrow pointing left. That's what we call left skewed. Greater frequencies is, is near one end of the histogram, so all the greater frequencies are up here. Um, and like the the sh the average will actually be pulled down by these guys. So the median will be somewhere in here. The average will be pulled down, and uh, 
this this is actually going to be left skewed because um, uh, because the tail is on the left. Okay. Um, generally, you'll 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 learn something about measures central tendency from the skew type. You can also use measures central tendency to help you uh, decide what type of distribution it is in in accompaniment with the histogram. Uh, symmetric or normal distribution uh, means that the mean is equal to the median is equal to the mode. Uh, right skewed, the, the mean is to the right. Uh, so in an example like this, the mean is actually pulled to the right. And in left skewed, the mean is pulled to the left. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a skewed distribution, the median better represents the data. And the new graph today is the box and whisker plot. Uh, it's really helpful for handling a lot of data values. It, it's another good visual representation that shows the spread of the data. So we actually show the spread on the box and whisker plot. It consists of the median, the quartiles, and the smallest and greatest values in the distribution. So it looks like it looks like this. You got you got Q1, Q2, and Q3, the highest and the lowest numbers. This does not include the outliers. We'll talk about outliers in a second. So if you if you take some data and, and you and you really just say what Q1, Q2, and Q3 are, and the max and the min, those are the only numbers that you're going to actually plot, and then you just draw a box around them. Outliers are not in, included in the range. So when we say this is the lowest and this is the highest, that does not include the outliers. So actually, like technology, uh, Fathom will actually tell you which ones are outliers, what points are outliers, and that's how when you're culminating you're going to identify outliers. Um, but mathematically an outlier exists when it's one and a half times the IQR uh, greater than or lower than Q1 or Q3. So if the box width is the IQR, then if you multiply that by 1.5, that's the longest that the whisker can be. And so if the point makes it longer, like obviously we can't draw a line out here because this this whisker would actually be longer than 50% bigger than the box or 1.5 times bigger than the box. Distribution um, so like if we if we look at the box plot and the histogram, we can actually see that if the histogram, if the median is to the left of the box and the, and, the, and the box here is to the left on the whisker, it actually denotes like a right skew. So something like this will match up to something like this where we can see this is right skewed. If the median is pulled to the left inside the box and also the box is to the left on the whisker. Okay, so a couple of things you can practice with. Try these questions to, look, to take a look.